Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And it's our culture unit for today, and we're actually going to be talking about rivers.、Uh, what rivers have to do with culture? You might be asking. Well, that's because a lot of things happen on rivers. Yeah. Of course,、uh, we have lots of fish and frogs and turtles living in rivers, but also a lot of people, you know, set up camp by rivers.、Uh, mm-hmm. They establish their towns and they use the rivers for shipping goods. Around the world, and it's still the case. Lots of rivers have big cities on them, like St. Louis, Missouri, for example.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that is on the Mississippi River, right? As are many other cities around the world. Yeah, and also think about the food that comes from rivers. That might affect a culture's、uh, cuisine, what they end up eating.、Um, I'm from a desert town, so because we don't have any water around us. Uh, my hometown isn't well known for、uh, seafood at all, but think about the towns that are quite close to either an ocean or a river. They、um, are probably serving a lot of seafood in those towns and cities. Right now, we're going to read through day one of our culture unit about rivers, and then we'll be back to talk about some of them in this particular unit. Since the dawn of time, many forms of life have relied heavily on rivers for survival. Without the blessings of the Tigris, Euphrates, Nile, Indus, and Yellow Rivers, ancient civilizations would never have been able to develop. These mighty waterways acted as sources of food and water, and allowed farmers to grow enough crops to feed a large population. What's more. For centuries, rivers were the best way to transport goods. Settlements situated on major rivers prospered as they became centers for trade. Even in the modern era, rivers continue to provide great value to us, whether we realize it or not. Rivers and streams are responsible for more than 60% of our drinking water. This water is drawn directly from these sources and cleaned before being sent to our homes through pipes. Rivers also supply food and nutrients for the countless wildlife species that live along them. In addition, rivers help bridge different ecosystems and thus enable many species to thrive. For example, many species of birds migrate during their lives. Rivers connect the wetlands that they move between, providing places for the birds to eat and rest. In addition to the physical gifts rivers offer. They also provide spiritual guidance. Artists from all cultures have used rivers as inspiration and as metaphors for life. In Mark Twain's novel *The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn*, the Mississippi River symbolizes liberty and future possibilities. In Asia, philosophers have been using rivers to teach spiritual lessons for thousands of years. They say the way that rivers flow gently around obstacles. Can teach us how to deal with problems in our own lives. Okay, everybody, let's explain the contents of today's lesson for you now. Again, it's our unit on culture, and the title is "Remarkable Rivers and Their Value to Life." So we're describing rivers as being remarkable. I think mainly because the word "remarkable"、uh-huh. starts with the letter R, <laughs> so it's kind of catchy. Remarkable rivers.、Yeah. That just means great rivers, fantastic rivers, and also we're talking about their value to life. Without rivers, we would not be able to live and survive. Okay, so remarkable rivers. Yeah, I'm not used to、uh, growing up around much water. Like I said, I grew up in a desert area. Ah.、Oh. Coming across water was kind of a treat for us, and we loved rain.、Uh, I'm from Arizona, and if you look up Arizona, you know there's a lot of desert area there. Although we do have mountains in the Grand Canyon, so since the dawn of time, or since the very beginning of time, we'll often use this expression. Since the dawn of time, many forms of life have relied heavily on rivers for survival. You must have water to live. You know, a person can go days and days without food, but they cannot go very long without some sort of liquid, some sort of water. 
So water is very, very important. It's vital. It's essential. You need it for survival. So without the blessings of these rivers,、um, how did you say these? The Tigris. A、uh, Tigris. That's Tigris. what I learned in school. And the Euphrates. Yeah. Of course, those two rivers are currently in Iraq,、yep. and a lot of people think that's where civilization, at least、started. in that part of the、mm. world, started. Yeah. In the Tigris and Euphrates Valley, there. Also, the Nile River in Africa, which flows north up、mm-hmm. into Egypt and、uh-huh. into the Mediterranean Sea. The Indus, of course, and also the Yellow Rivers. Now, the Indus, I'm not familiar with the others. I've all heard of, but Uh, yeah, these are really, really、uh, big rivers, and they've been blessings to the people or the civilizations that were established around them. If you have a civilization, you have a group of people who have a, a language and a culture.、Uh, there's social development that happens. They they continue to progress.、Um, they're more advanced than some other groups of people. So these ancient civilizations would never have been able to continue to advance or. Develop without these important rivers. Exactly. So those are some of the most famous rivers in the world. Those are big rivers. But as you said, growing up in Arizona,、mm. you didn't really have a big river around you. But when I was a kid, of course, I went down to the river all the time. It was just a couple of blocks away from my house. Wow. But it was not a big river. Could you fish? Uh, I guess you could. I never did. Oh, really? I wasn't really into that. But,、oh. You know, I, I like to lo- walk along the trails、uh-huh. next to the river. And during the winter, of course, I would cross-country ski on the river because it was frozen. Oh, yeah. But、uh, that was the Des Moines River or the east. Excuse me, the West Fork of the Des Moines River. Uh, which is big enough, but、uh, we're talking about big rivers here.、Uh, I guess you could also talk about some of the rivers here in Taiwan, like the Dan Shui or、uh-huh. the Jilong or the Sindian rivers.、Uh, they're all pretty popular. So indeed, these mighty waterways acted as sources of food and water,、mm-hmm. and allowed farmers to grow enough crops to feed a large population. So these are waterways,、uh, which is a word that can be used to describe a river, but more in the sense that It's a place that you can use, or it's a river you can use to transport yourself or goods from one place to another. Right,、uh, they are. They're mighty waterways.、Uh, what's more, it says, for centuries or hundreds of years, rivers were the best way to transport goods. Now, transport is a noun and a verb. Here, of course, it's a verb, and you can pronounce this transport. But you're quite all right if you just say transport. So if you transport something, it's either moving people or goods from one place to another, and usually uh, it's uh, through some. Vehicle, maybe it's a, a truck, maybe it's some sort of airplane, maybe it's a ship.、Um, you move things from one place to another. Now, if you're studying abroad and you happen to be more familiar with、uh, English, which is the kind of English the Brits use, they use transport instead of the word transportation. So, if they're talking about the MRT, they might say, "Oh, Taiwan has." Excellent transport, but Americans would never do that. We use transport、uh, as a verb primarily, and we would say transportation. Transportation is the system that goods and people、um, use to move from one place to another. So rivers, back in the day, especially before we had airplanes and even cars, rivers were really important to move people and things, particularly goods. You know, food they needed to live with. Or live on,、uh, they would use these rivers to take it from one place where those things were grown to another place where other people lived. They don't seem as popular as they used to be. Yeah,、uh, I think here in Taiwan, of course,、uh, you know, Da Dao Chung and Manga in Taipei used to be ports on the Dan Shui、oh. River,、huh. and they would actually、uh, transport goods overseas from those places. Now, of course,、uh, they、uh, transport goods from Jilong and Gaoshong and Taichung harbors.、Hmm. But in any case, we're talking about transporting goods on those rivers and settlements situated on major rivers. 
prospered as they became centers for trade. So here we've got the word settlement. That just means where people have decided to build a town,、mm -hmm. and if they were next to rivers or on those rivers,、uh -huh. uh, they prospered. So this is the verb prosper, which means you get rich, you get money, you succeed、uh, in financial terms.、Uh, you can prosper, for example, if you're a country boy and you're moving up to the big city, you can prosper by getting a good job in、uh, trade or finance, and you can become really rich. Yeah, prosperous. Uh, that adjective prosperous. We all hope to be prosperous someday. Yeah. So if you were situated or located on a major river,、um, that really was pretty good fortune for you. Good luck for you because they became centers for trade. These rivers were really. the the chief way of actually transporting things from one place to another,、uh, at least、uh, you know off the land, there were no planes and cars for a long time, or even railroads, even in the modern era, and we're living in that today. Rivers continue to provide great value to us, whether we realize it or not. Yeah, so we're going to talk about how these rivers are providing so much value for us. Moving on to the next paragraph, it says rivers and streams. Streams are smaller rivers.、Uh, a stream is pretty tiny for me. I would say a stream,、uh, even an adult or a kid, maybe up to、uh, not too young, but maybe、uh, nine to fifteen, you could cross the stream and not get in trouble.、Um, mm. Most streams don't move very quickly, and Uh, they're clean. Primarily,、uh, the streams I've run across are in mountains, and you can usually drink the water in them. But be careful.、Um, it says here, though, rivers and streams are responsible for more than sixty percent of our drinking water. It's a lot of water. The rest of the water is probably pumped out from wells that are deep inside the earth.、Mm. Uh, we have wells in Arizona, but we also、uh, have a lot of canals that bring in water from California. So. Yeah, rivers and streams are responsible for allowing us to drink water, which is、uh, vital or really essential for survival. That figure might be higher here in Taiwan because,、yeah. of course, you all depend on those reservoirs, or we all depend、yeah. on those reservoirs for our drinking water. Especially here in Taipei, there's the Feitui Reservoir、uh, in Xindian there, and of course, the water is treated at Jitan there.、So. I want to mention too.、Yep. Uh, you can also pronounce that word "reservoir,"、okay. uh, which is how we say it in Arizona, "reservoir." But yeah,、Sounds、I、French、don't. There. Yeah, it is. It's a French word. How I don't know where they're located in Taiwan. Is there one close to us here in Taipei City?、Uh, yeah, Feitui Reservoir. Have you seen、uh, it? Uh, sure, I've、oh, seen it. I used、cool. to live in Sindian, but、uh, it is kind of hard to see because it's in the mountains. You have to know exactly where it is to see it.、Oh. But of course, it's got a dam there, and it holds the water back, and that provides drinking water. You for... can't swim in there, right? You're not supposed to.、Oh. I wouldn't swim in there, and you're not supposed to dump your trash in there either.、Uh -oh. Some people certainly try to do that, but in any case, here、uh, in most of the world, sixty、uh, percent is the amount of drinking water that is.、Uh, That is derived or、mm -hmm. taken from rivers, and the water is drawn directly from these sources and cleaned or treated、mm -hmm. before being sent to our homes through pipes. And I guess that's what happens in Jutan. There, they they treat the water, they clean it before we can actually use yeah, it. Yeah, that water that comes into your kitchen sink or your bathroom, those are called. Taps tap water is the water that comes through that. I know when I lived here a long time ago in Taiwan,、uh, we were encouraged to boil the water that came through the taps before drinking it. I feel like it's cleaner now, though. I don't always boil my water. Sometimes I just use the tap water as is.、Um, I know other people like to clean it, you know, through purification systems you can buy in stores, or、uh, they buy the bottled water.、Uh, That is that can be delivered to your home,、uh, but the tap water is actually the water that's coming to our homes through those pipes. We're going to take a quick break now, guys. Listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to continue talking about remarkable rivers. Hello, my name is Shelby. Today's 文章要探讨河流的重要性。标题 Remarkable Rivers. Remarkable 就是非凡的。
。第一段我们要提到，从很久以前，河流就影响了人类的生活。在第一句的地方，自从 the dawn of time。Dawn 是黎明的意思。We woke up at dawn 就表示天一亮我们就醒了。Dawn of something 表示在什么开始的时候。Of time 呢，那表示时代喽，在时代的开始，那就是创世之初。有很多各种生命形态 have relied on。Rely on 是 depend on、come on 的意思，也就是依赖，中间还加一个 heavily。大大的，我们依赖着河流 for survival 存活下去。如果没有诱发拉底河、底格里斯河等啊，古代文明也不会发展哦。我们到第五句的地方 ，settlements， 人们安居下来就可以说 people settle down。那 settlements 呢，是在 settle 后面加个 ment， 表示安居或定居点。situated 是位于、坐落于的意思。它常常用被动的形态，后面加个介系词，再加地方，相当于 located， 或者有人写成 sitting、standing 也可以。好，这些定居点呢，位在大河旁边 ，prospered。prosper 是繁荣。好，后面 as 它当成因为，因为它们变成了 centers for trade。trade 是贸易，变成了贸易中心，而整个繁荣起来。那关于河流对生物以及人类的必要性，我们要在第二段的地方，第一句，河流 and streams， streams 是小溪。其实另外还有一个 brook， 也是表示河流。水量最大的是 river， Yellow River。那想象在一个山谷中有一条小河，就是 brook。最少的水量是 stream， 它是河流里的细小支流。河流呢？ Are responsible for 这是一个片语，表示负责或者掌管，也就是占了什么的意思，有 account for 的意味。好，这些河流啊，占了我们的 drinking water 的百分之六十。各式的水的说法呢，例如像淡水就是 fresh water， 海水 sea water， 而碱性水标榜健康的就是 alkaline water。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 好了。Homes and rivers also supply food and nutrients for the countless wildlife species that live along them. So, of course, yes, birds, frogs, turtles, other creatures depend on those rivers for food and nutrients. So, nutrients, of course, refer to minerals and vitamins and stuff like that that will give us nourishment that is. Important or essential for life. If we don't have those vitamins and、yeah. minerals, we just can't survive. So the rivers provide that stuff not only for the wildlife but for us as well. And we're talking about wildlife species here.、Uh, this word could also be pronounced species. That just means the same kind of creature or organism. It could be a plant too. It certainly could, and、mm. they kind of they can reproduce with each other.、Mm. That's the main、uh, characteristic of a species. Or they can share DNA.、Uh, they uh, certainly yeah, can. Yeah, interchange the DNA. Yeah, wild species. I tend to say species. More than species, but like Tom said, they're both correct, and I would guess it's about half and half. I I hear it、uh, pronounced both ways. So,、mm. pick the one you like the best. That's easiest for you. In addition, it says here that rivers help bridge different ecosystems, and thus enable many species to thrive. This is a clever sentence, I must say. Our writer has used this verb bridge.、Uh, to bridge just means to connect two things. Of course, it. 
that can also be a noun that just means an object that connects, you know, one I guess road or another road together. Maybe you're going over a river and you don't want to swim, so we build bridges that go across these rivers. Or maybe it's a canyon and you need a bridge over the canyon. So a bridge here is a verb, just saying it's connecting. So it helps connect different ecosystems and thus enable many species to thrive. An ecosystem is, you know, all of the animals and the physical environment in that area and how they get along with each other. Now, for example, many species of birds migrate during their lives.、Um, if you want to thrive somewhere, you sometimes have to migrate. To thrive just means to grow and develop and do very well in an area. People can thrive as well as. As animals and birds,、um, maybe you're at a, a new school now, and you just have you know new friends, and it's really inspired you to study more. And your parents are excited that you're thriving in your new environment. Now, Tom, you're into birds. What does it mean when birds migrate?、Uh, they fly from one part of the world to another, especially during different seasons. My understanding is that there are many bird species that、uh, migrate through Taiwan,、oh. uh, from Siberia or from northern places. Of course, the most famous example is the black-faced spoonbill, or Hamean pilu.、Uh, they migrate between some islands near Korea,、oh. and the what's that river down in Tainan? I can't remember between. Between Tainan and Korea, let's just say that、uh -huh. they migrate between those two places. They fly back and forth during different parts of the year. Because they like warmer weather, it sounds like、uh, Korea gets kind of cold in the winter. So rivers connect the wetlands that they move between. A wetland is an area of land that is just really soggy. There's a lot of water there. Um, there's usually tall grass as well. Florida is a famous area of wetlands,、uh, and you usually need a kind of boat to get through those. Be careful because you often find alligators in the wetlands.、Um, but these、uh, places provide the birds places to eat and sleep and rest and. Uh, to live for a while. So, in addition to the physical gifts rivers offer, they also provide spiritual guidance. Ooh, we're getting to, into the spiritual now.、Uh, we certainly are, especially for people.、Mm. So, let's、uh, talk about some examples of spiritual guidance.、Uh, artists from all cultures have used rivers as inspiration and as metaphors for life. So, some really great landscape paintings will include rivers, especially if you're talking about rivers that. Flow through certain parts of the world,、mm. like parts of China. You know they've got some great paintings of rivers flowing through、uh, traditional villages、mm -hmm. with、uh, traditional houses lining the banks of the river. So that can be inspiration for artists. But we also use rivers as metaphors for life. Okay, metaphor of course is a figure of speech.、Uh, I can use one right now.、Uh, she was crying so much that her eyes flowed rivers of tears.、So Your tears. You have so many tears. They become a river. Not really, but that's a metaphor. There, a river of tears. So this is a, a term that's used to describe things in life, where you, you know, use something in nature to help describe what you are talking about.、Mm -hmm. uh, so metaphors for life,、uh, like a river. It starts from far north and flows south, and you can think of all sorts of stories、uh, having to do with the river. Yeah, metaphors are used quite often、uh, in writing. Shakespeare uses them a lot. All the world's a stage. The world's not really a stage, but he's using a metaphor to describe、uh, the world as being like a stage. All of us are actors. In Mark Twain's novel, *The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn*, which I so recommend, it's very entertaining.、Uh, I read that myself. I'm sure Tom, you read it too. Long the, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a it's a great book. The Mississippi River, which is The largest river in the state. It symbolizes liberty and future possibilities. To symbolize just means it stands for something. I'll use a couple of really famous examples.、Uh, a red rose symbolizes romantic love, not friend love, not you know that love you have between friends, but romantic love. And liberty is another word for freedom. And we love freedom. So this river could also just stand for future possibilities. Yeah, what is it that you want to achieve in life? The the actors or the characters in this book are young people, you know, and they haven't 
decided where their lives are going to lead, and so there are a lot of possibilities as they go from one place to another on the Great Mississippi River. Ah,、uh, yeah, Mark Twain loves the Mississippi River. In fact, he's got a nonfiction book called Life on the Mississippi, yeah, which describes his life as a riverboat pilot and other things. But、uh, you know, Huck Finn here and Tom Sawyer,、uh, their works of fiction. You can probably download those for free from the internet. So, of course, here in Asia, philosophy. Philosophers have been using rivers to teach spiritual lessons for thousands of years. You probably know about some of the philosophers here, like Lao Tzu and Kong Tzu and people like that. And they say the way that rivers flow gently around obstacles、mm. can teach us how to deal with problems in our own lives. Indeed, water just keeps on flowing, and they just keep flowing to the ocean. There, most rivers do. If Some, it's blocked, it just finds another way, doesn't it? It gets、yeah. around. So that's what an obstacle is—something、yeah. that blocks your way. In life, you might encounter lots of obstacles, but you figure out ways to get around those things. Yeah, don't stop. Keep trying. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap up. We're to the fourth place. 除了供应水及养分之外呢 ，in addition， 除此之外，河流还帮忙 bridge bridge 桥，这里当做动词，架起桥梁，用桥连接的意思。帮忙连接的不同的 ecosystems， 这是一个 ecology 生态，加上 system 系统合并而成的生字，表示生态系统。而且啊 ，thus 因此呢 ，enable 点点点 to be 是什么什么能够做什么事情。中间的 species 是物种，使很多的物种都能够 to thrive。thrive 是茁壮。前面我们看到 prosper 繁荣，这两个生字其实是互通的。好 ，thrive 的三态 ，thrive、thrive、thrive， 它是属于不规则变化。大河连接起不同的湿地，滋养着生物。第三段，除了实质帮助之外啊，河流也提供了精神的慰藉。在第一句 ，in addition to， 除了什么？它是一个介系词片语，后面加名词，和 along with、together with 以及 as well as 的意思雷同。除了这些 physical gift，physical 是肉体的。我们这里当成食物的实体店面就是 a physical store。好 ，physical gifts 翻译成物质上的馈赠。后面有一个 rivers offer， 省掉 which 的形容词短句来修饰。Offer 是提供，他们同时也 provide 提供一些精神上的 guidance 是引导。那 offer 跟 provide 都是提供，有什么不一样呢？ Provide 的用法呀，叫做 provide somebody with something. A offer 是强调主动给予，用法 offer somebody something 没有介系词 with。接着文章后面的句子说啊，马克吐温的《顽童历险记》以及其他亚洲的哲学家都用河流来象征精神意念。我们看到第五句，他们说这种方式后面一个 that 子句形容。Rivers, 河流 flow 流过 gently 是平缓的 gentleman 绅士，绕过这些 obstacles 就是障碍物，可以教会我们 how to deal with 点点点。这原来是 how we deal with 点点点的一个名词短句，我们也可以拿掉主词，简化成 how to deal with 当成名词片语来使用。这些河流流过障碍物的方式呢，教会我们应对生活中的问题。以上是今天的讲解，谢谢收听。That's it for today, everybody. But please join us again next time when we continue to talk about remarkable rivers. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure you are too. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.